Hi, it's Mike Gerzy here at Music Villa. In this session, we're going to talk about the right hand. And if you've been watching the, the videos uh, in the past few sessions, we were talking about some things that we did, uh, playing the G chord, playing G runs, licks, moving to C, moving to D, uh, and all that's great stuff. And we're going to continue with that uh, in the subsequent sessions that we do. But I thought I'd take a, a break for a, on this session and address the right hand. There's been some comments about people wanting to know, how do you hold the pick and how do you actually move the right hand to get the sound and everything that you do as a flatbed guitar player. So that's what this video is going to be about. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the pick. Obviously, as flat pickers, we use a plectrum or a pick. That's the whole concept. If you read my article on, uh, on the Gersey Files, the blog about uh, the flat pick, I talked about the idea that uh, the, the way that we play as flat pickers is we don't use our fingers, we use a flat pick. So uh, we'll show a close-up of, of the pick and holding it, but basically uh, what you're going to do is you're going to set the pick right sort of on the top of your index finger, and then you're just going to let your thumb come across. Just like a handshake, you're just going to hold the pick. And then uh, one of the things that a lot of people tend to do is they'll uh, maybe have too much pick or too little pick sticking out um, from the flesh of their finger, and um, they don't really know how to place the pick and, and get it. So really what you want to have is just a little bit of the pick sticking out so you can really feel the pick. You don't want the pick to be loose. You don't want a death grip. You just want to hold the pick so it's nice and comfortable in your hand. Now, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Some players will, will hold it, you know, right on the tip of their finger, and they'll hold it this way. Um, I can't sit here and tell you there's an absolute right or wrong way to hold a pick, but this is the common way that we will hold the pick. Um, then the next thing that we'll do is we're going to look at where our arm, uh, wrist, and fingers sort of uh, come into the guitar. It's sort of like a, a, a pendulum, if you will. The, the elbow of your guitar is going to kind of come at a 45 from the, from the bridge so that when your arm comes up to address the strings, the pick placement is right behind the sound hole. This is what we call the sweet spot. If you play too close to the bridge, you get a real bright sound. Real, if you play too far in front of the sound hole, you get a softer, mellower sound. But the sweet spot is usually right, right, right in the rosette, right behind the, the, the sound hole. So when your arm is addressing the, the strings at that angle, your hand, sort of the palm of your hand is sort of in line with the, with the uh, end pins and the saddle, and then your pick just kind of fits right behind the sound hole. That's what you want to sort of aim for. The other thing that we do uh, when we're talking about holding the pick in the right hand is you'll see some people that will um, they'll sort of swing their, their arm a lot, they'll get a lot of this kind of movement, or they'll play up here, or they'll, they'll kind of move around, and that changes the tone when you do that. And so what you want to do to have a consistent tone, if you're not purposely doing that for, for dynamic effect, but if you want to have consistent tone, you want to stay sort of in that spot. And so as you move your arm like a pendulum, the, the pick is going to stay straight. So when I play on the low E string, or when I play on the high E string, I'm still in the same line, if you will, of where the pick addresses the strings. So you don't want to play the low E string here, and then come down here and play the high up here, because now I just created a variable in my tone when I move the position of the pick. So think about the placement of the pick, where it, where it sits in the sweet spot, and keeping a, you know, a, straight, a straight line as you move up and down. So when we're playing, you can see that my hand is staying right in the pocket. I'm not way up here, I'm not way down here, I'm just right here. Okay, so that's how we hold the pick, and that's how we sort of address the placement of the pick into the strings. Okay, so now that we know, you know how we're holding the pick and where we're placing it, we want to talk a little bit about what I call um, uh, pick depth. And that's the, how far in does the pick go into the, we'll get a shot of this looking down on it, but basically um, when you look down, you're going to see the pick. I can see the tip of the pick now inside the strings, and so you don't want too much pick in the strings, and, but you don't want too little either. You want just enough so that the pick can sort of, um, I'm just going to play on this G, this G note. So 
so that it, it, it can fall through the string and not get hung up on itself. If I have too much pick in there, it, then I can't get out and I'm gonna get hung up. If I have too little, I'm gonna miss it. So pick depth is, is essentially how far in does the pick go into the string set. And you want just enough to make good solid contact. That's what we call pick depth. The next thing that we're gonna do, and you'll probably notice, you know, I kind of have this weird placement of my pinky on the, on the pick guard. There's two concepts that we talk about. We call uh, anchoring versus floating. When we anchor, that's when we're actually touching the guitar. In my case, my pinky finger is always in contact with the pick guard. So when I'm playing, my pinky is, is sitting there and it's just a guide. It, it tells me where my hand is, tells me where my pick depth is, tells me where I'm, I'm sort of sitting uh, in the sweet spot where I'm at on the guitar. And it just moves, it just kind of, it's just kind of free, it's free to go up and down on the pick guard. And then these two fingers just kind of hang. The other way that we can play is what we call floating. And floating is where nothing touches the guitar. Your hand is literally floating in the air and you you sort of have a, an idea of, of where your hand is so that when you're playing, you're, you're, you're right there, but you're not really in contact. And that's sort of a feel thing. A lot of guys do that. And they can just kind of see where they're at, and so they're just kind of hanging on to a specific area around the, the sweet spot, and that's called floating. The difficulty with floating is exactly what what uh, what I do, is I, I sort of lose my depth, I lose where I'm at. So by anchoring, I'm always in contact with the guitar, I'm, I always know where I am. So you can experiment with those, figure out which is more comfortable. Uh, people that I've talked to that float, or that anchor, they didn't actually um, set out to do that. It wasn't something that they purposely said, I'm gonna float or I'm gonna anchor. It's just whatever happened naturally as they were progressing through their studies, it, it just felt more comfortable to do one or the other. And that's sort of where they took it. And so you'll, um, again, not have a right or wrong answer on that one. It's just gonna be whatever works for you. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about um, how we actually pick the strings. There's two concepts that we use. One is called a, a rest stroke, and the other one is called a free stroke. Both of these uh, styles actually come from the classical guitar um, techniques where you use your thumb and your fingers, and they use what uh, is referred to as a rest stroke, meaning that the, the pick is actually going to go through the string and come to rest on the string below. So I'm actually playing the string I have my sweet spot, everything's in line, my pick depth, everything's good to go. And I play the string, I push through the string, and I come to rest on the string below. And that's called a rest stroke. It's the most powerful stroke that we have as flat pickers because it really sets the string into motion. So whether I'm on the low E string, I rest on the A. If I play the A string, I rest on the D string. Play the D string, I rest on the G. When I play the G, I rest on the B string, and when I play the B, I rest on the E, and when I play the E, you're going to say, well, what do I rest on when I play the E? It's a feel. It's kind of this, it's just right there. If there was a string there, I would have come to rest on it, so it's, that's a feel thing. That's called a rest stroke. When we talked about the G run, that's a rest stroke. That really gives you that punch, but, you know, so you hear it, you can hear how that last note really stands out. It's because it was a rest stroke. Okay, the other way is... Uh, what we call a free stroke, or some people refer to it as a swing. So we're actually uh, swinging, the pick is moving up and down, and we're not resting. We're actually floating free. We pick the string, it, it swings up, we come up, it swings up. Swing down, swing up. I'm exaggerating it, but that's the idea. That's called a, a free stroke or a swing stroke. So those two strokes are the, are the way that we uh, pick the strings when we're playing this style of music. Now the question always is, when do I use the rest? When do I use the free? Um, it's pretty much a given that if I'm playing uh, quarter notes, half notes, whole notes, anytime where it's just one solid note, I'm gonna use a, a rest stroke. So if I'm playing a tune that's in quarter notes or in four, four time where it's one, two, three, four, I can use a rest stroke. Um, if it's a even a longer duration note, there's no reason why I wouldn't just play the rest stroke and let that note ring. When I go to eighth notes, now where I'm doing straight eights, where I'm doing one and two and three and, now I'm gonna use the swing. So now 
now you can see I'm just playing one and two and three and, and I'm just using the swing stroke. Can't use a rest stroke if I'm trying to play eights, and especially if I'm up to up to speed, you just can't do it because you're you're uh, moving the pick up and down. So that's where the swing stroke comes into place. So those are the two ways that we're going to address the string. We're going to play a rest stroke or a free stroke. And next I'm going to talk about um, actually picking. We're going to do some alternate picking and show you how that works. Okay, so we're going to talk about alternate picking. Alternate picking um, is when we actually are playing uh, eighth notes. We're doing the one and two and three and. So, and it's basically just playing what I was showing in that last example. We're just going down up. So if we're on the same string, we're always going to play down ups. In other words, if I'm playing a line, even if I'm playing different notes, if I play that was down, up, down. If I'm on the same string, I'm going to alternate picking. When I change strings, there's two things that happen. One, in one style, you can actually play a downstroke when you play the, the next string. Gypsy jazz players do that all the time. Uh, the other way is to just stay in the down ups. If I change strings and it's calling for a downstroke because the last was an up, then I'm going to play a down. If it's calling for an up because the last was a down, I'll do that. So I might do something like this. I was all just consistent down ups. I wasn't even paying attention whether I was changing strings or not. I was just staying in the alternate picking. Okay, so that's alternate picking. Always thinking of the down ups. The last thing I want to talk about is how we pick with our right hand when we're playing a chord. Most people, when you play a chord, I'm just going to play a G chord. And what ends up happening is they do what I just did. You sort of rake. You sort of do this rake thing. That's really not what we want to do. We want the chord to sound like one note. So I want to just hit it. So when I do that, you didn't hear this raking sound. You didn't hear that. You heard one solid sound. It was all the notes ringing together at the same time. So to do that, we actually just kind of do what, we, what I call a hit. You just come through and you just kind of hit the strings in one swoop. Okay, so I'm coming through here, I'm hitting the top, I'm pushing all the way through the strings, and then I'm just kind of swinging out a little bit. It's kind of this slight curve, but it's just one hit. Okay, and that's the idea on playing a chord so it sounds like one note. Now, obviously, we're not going to play rhythm that way where we're just kind of, you know, doing this, this hit thing. It would be kind of boring. We'll talk more about how we actually get into a rhythm groove. But the idea is we want the chord to sound like one note, one sound. Okay, so that's basically the idea of what, how we're going to play the right hand, how we're going to use the right hand when we play, I should say. And um, go back, rewind the video, look at all these different topics, look about um, holding the pick, pick placement. Uh, depth, uh, rest strokes, sw swing strokes, hitting the chords, alternate picking, all those things. Just f rewind it till you get what you need to get out of it. But that's the idea of how we address the right hand. Okay, so this is Mike Gersey from Music Villa. We'll see you next time.